Hey guys, my name is Shai and it is Sunday, September 11th, I think. And the beginning of this year, I set the intention to do a weekly reading every Sunday to kind of take the pulse, right? To be aware of how the weeks are flowing through the year, to be aware of how I am moving through time. I think that is, <laughs> at the end of the day, the, the actual, like, behind-the-scenes purpose for doing this every Sunday for a whole year. But so, this morning I woke up and I felt this, like, massive aversion to drawing any cards. I didn't even do my morning, like, every single morning for the past three years, I get up, I get my coffee, I sit down with my cards and I draw a couple of cards, um just for the day, right? I didn't even, I didn't do that this morning and I didn't feel like I could sit down at my desk and draw some cards. So it's it highly, highly, highly unusual for me to feel, to feel like I don't want to draw cards. I love to draw cards like any excuse I can get basically. Um, but I just wasn't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what that is, but I still wanted to make a video. So um, I'm hiding out in my bathroom because my house is really loud like right now because I have like laundry going. Um, and my, my husband and my stepson are playing D and D, so it, it's loud out there. So if I can hide in my ensuite bathroom, because it's like I can shut the door to my bedroom, and then I can shut the door to the bathroom, and then it's like extra, you know, insulation. And as you can tell, I, I'm I'm just this is what this video is going to be like. I'm just going to be rambling about details because that that's I'm in a very I don't know, a very strange type of headspace where I, I feel like almost like overwhelmed by details, um, but also like very interested in details. And I feel like I could actually read the details um, as if they are cards. And that's something I talk about every once in a while, right, where I don't just read the cards. It's not just about reading, you know, like what is a four of hearts or four, four of hearts. <laughs> Interesting. I'm, I'm seeing like, like cartomancy, you know, like you can read tarot cards or you can read regular playing cards, you can read those just like you can read tarot cards, although some people read them like differently, they use a different system for it, but wh wh whichever. So that's very interesting that I'm thinking of cartomancy, and I was said the Four of Hearts instead of like the Four of Cups. Another interesting detail, right? So it's like we, we can read these details, and not just of the cards we're looking at, not just of like the psychic impressions we're getting, right? But we can like read the details of our thoughts, of our behavior, of our lives, of the energetic flows around us. And that's where I feel like I am. I feel like I'm very strangely immersed in my reality on, on a level that I feel like I don't normally experience. So um, basically I feel like I need to take stock. Like that's why I'm in here. Like I'm like barricaded in the bathroom. Like my dog's with me because he just had a bath and um, He's a chihuahua and he gets very cold after a bath, so he's in here so I can make sure he stays covered up and stays warm. Um, what am I saying? So I feel like I need to take stock. Like I need to take stock and understand like where I'm at because I feel like I have just become aware of my reality in a new way or like I'm like, suddenly re re relating, <laughs> relating to my reality in a new way. And it, it feels like I need to somehow reconcile all of these details that I'm experiencing. Um, so it was just the Pisces full moon, right? We just had the Pisces full moon. And if you're watching this in the future um, and you know, you're not related at all to the Pisces full moon, that's fine. Um, it, it, it's like, there's just this, let me just, let me just talk about the details of the Pisces full moon for a minute because it was super interesting. So I have a special relationship with the Pisces full moon because I'm a Pisces North node. So I'm always on this Pisces journey of learning to be more like Pisces, learning about Pisces, learning to like flow in that direction and let, and simultaneously letting go of the Virgo South node, like letting go of the mind, letting go of perfectionism, letting go of criticism and judgment. Of course, that is not the be all end of a Virgo. That is just the lower frequency energies of Virgo that I have a lot of, and then I need to let go of so that I can flow in the direction of Pisces, which is ultimately I mean, Pisces is literally everything, but at the end of the day, it's like transcendence of everything, right? So the Pisces full moon is always like very explosive for me because it kind of like climaxes a moment on my North Node journey. And it was interesting. I did actually, so I had a very high frequency experience with the Pisces full moon, but I, I, I know that it, like, it, it was experienced by different people on like every single level. So I ha have had a lot of like success and accomplishment and like achievements um, in very like in different ways kind of coming up over this weekend. And I had a really, really just fun transcendent weekend and it was awesome. Um, 
but that's only one way of how that full moon was experienced. The kind of middle level is a lot of people I, I know also had some kind of um, like epiphany about themselves, um, specifically like perhaps about their emotions, about how they deal with their emotions, about how they maybe don't feel some emotions the way other people feel them. Um, just suddenly understanding something about themselves like and going like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, right? And like, wow, this changes a lot and maybe I want to change how I approach this thing in my life moving forward. And so that that's pretty good, right? Although um, if you had that experience, it might not have been that comfortable of a process to get to that epiphany, but still totally worth it in the long run. But then there's also people who experience kind of the lower frequencies of Pisces where that's essentially dissolving, right? Dissolution. Um, you're feeling like your life is falling apart and feeling like the, like, cause the, like despair is also a Pisces thing, right? Despair, feeling like, like hitting rock bottom it, it can be in, involved there or just feeling like overwhelmed by so p people who are also at like in the bottom of this Pisces frequency who are who are, didn't experience it in a very enjoyable way um that's also because it's like the Virgo energies are holding you down right um it's like if you're thinking if you're thinking too much right if you're thinking too much your thoughts will lead you to bad places if you're holding yourself to standards if you're criticizing yourself judging yourself or criticizing or judging others um anything about perfectionism and worrying about details, worrying about little things that maybe don't need to be worried about right now, all of those things, that that's what's going to lead you to that place of despair or feeling like your life is unwinding. And But the more you can tune into the transcendent aspects of Pisces and just allow yourself to escape, right? Like escapism, escapism, even if that's like watching like watching what, something that you might think is a really silly TV show, right? You, that's indicated with Pisces energy. We want to be able to escape. And of course... Society really doesn't like escapism, right? We're conditioned to feel that escapism is bad. And of course, everything when taken too far becomes unhealthy, right? But a, there's a certain level of escapism that is not only healthy and, and important for life, but a certain level of, of escapism actually helps you to succeed because it allows you to let things be easy and allows you to let things just be good enough. Like say you have a bunch of stressful work stuff happening um, or you're trying to like just whatever you have stressful life stuff happening right the stuff that you're trying to handle But maybe you don't really want to you don't really enjoy the process of it, right? But it's like if you can allow yourself to escape that and yet still handle it right still go to work Still do that work meeting still hand in that assignment still launch that business project still whatever it is that you're doing right if you still allow yourself to just handle it but without worrying about it too much by allowing yourself to escape and by allowing yourself to like distract yourself by even if it's watching TV, reading a book, hanging out with your friends, having a beer and eating a pizza, whatever it is, allowing yourself to escape can actually allow you to handle the things you need to handle more efficiently and more effectively than if you were thinking about it too much, right? So escapism actually can allow you to succeed because it like takes the pressure off and you go, okay, it doesn't really matter, right? Okay, maybe I didn't do that thing perfectly, but it's fine. It's going to be good enough, right? This is good enough. This is good enough. And I'm not going to worry about how this meeting is going to go. I'm not going to worry about how this thing is going to go because it's going to be good enough and it's going to be fine. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter all that much. And you find yourself, that's how you can allow yourself to start building momentum of rolling forward. It's actually by worrying about it less. So the Pisces escapism can actually help you Virgo get shit done without, <laughs> without, self-sabotage right without self-sabotage Pisces can help you transcend your self-sabotage so that's kind of um that's where I'm at with the Pisces full moon and that's like an energy we're really going to be integrating for the what rest the west <laughs> the west of the week <laughs> the rest of the week um because Pisces full moon being a culmination a something coming to fruition something being birthed um, something complete, completing completion of a cycle, something ending, but whatever with ever with every ending is also a new beginning, and that's the other phrase I'm really getting for not even just this next week, but for like the next month or two. It's cascades of new beginnings, or like cascading new beginnings. It's like this place is full moon. This is like an ending and a new beginning all rolled into one, and there's just gonna be more new beginnings like rolling out after this it's going to be wave after wave after wave of new beginnings wave after wave after wave of new beginnings because just think about it okay we just had the pisces full moon today's the 11th um so the next thing is going to be the libra equinox i don't know the exact date if it's like the 21st or the 20 22nd this year or something like that depending on your time zone maybe even the 23rd so that's coming up in you know a week and a half 
the Libra equinox is always a huge new beginning, right? Cascading into like changing of the seasons, right? Whether, whether you're changing into spring or into fall, um, which really, really shifts things for me. Like that is a big, big shift for me, feel, um, you know, cause it's like it's, here it starts to cool down. You know, I start wearing different clothes. I start having the windows open more cause I don't have to run the air conditioning in it. Like it really changes the whole vibe, right? Changes the whole vibe. It changes the things I do. It changes the things I eat. It's like really changes my material reality, right? Really changes my material reality. <sighs> it's going to be Libra new moon. Another new beginning, Aries full moon. That is another new beginning because Aries is the beginning energy, right? We often think of the full moons as like a climax and a completion, right? But with the Aries full moon, so that's a whole nother month from now, but that's how far out I'm, I'm looking right now because it's like new beginning, new beginning, new beginning. <laughs> the Aries full moon coming up in one month. The Aries is such a brand new, fresh start. Here we go, I am energy, right? So the Aries full moon in and of itself is a new beginning. And then I can, I, like, my brain can't help this. It's like I'm, I can run this even further. And it's like I'm taking stock of the whole rest of the year right now, right? The whole rest of the year, the whole rest of 2022, just off the top of my head, like, what, what do we have coming up, right? What do we have coming up after the Aries full moon? Then it's going to be, we're going to be going into Scorpio season. And Scorpio season is always really intense for everybody. That is always super energetically huge for everybody. This year, it's going to be even more intense that uh, than usual because we're going to have two eclipses right the scorpio new moon is going to be a new moon solar eclipse right solar eclipse in scorpio and uh then there's gonna be the taurus full moon which is going to be a full moon eclipse a lunar eclipse in taurus right so that's really crazy if you think back to taurus season when we had those two eclipses right they were the opposite it was a solar eclipse in Taurus and a lunar eclipse in Scorpio, but we're having the opposite thing happen in Scorpio season. And I remember everybody telling me like after the Scorpio full moon, it was like a blood moon, full moon, super moon eclipse. Everyone was like, that was the most intense energetic experience, like purging experience, right? Purging to have a fresh start, purging to have a fresh start experience that like, like anyone could remember, right? It was super crazy. So we're coming up to the second iteration of that. It's going to be very interesting. Of course, we're not going to really know the details of how that's going to play out until we get there, but it's, it's somehow going to be like, cause it's weird. Cause the moons that the eclipses are mirroring it's themselves from earlier, right? They're switched. So in some ways there's going to be a repeat, a repeat of what we experienced back in Taurus season, but in other ways, it's going to be like completing that, whatever we began, whatever we purged, whatever we healed back then, it's going to be like a revisiting and a completion of it, but it's also going to be catapulting us in this whole new direction. And it's like, really what I'm seeing is like a V, like imagine a, a bouncing ball, right? Comes in, bam, and then it hits the ground and it bounces off at the same angle, but now it's going up, right? So it's like, if you feel like you've been on a downward spiral since since Taurus season and those eclipses, boom, you're going to hit the ground and then keep bouncing and you're going to take all your momentum with you. But now your trajectory is going to be going up, right? If that makes sense. So <laughs> more new beginnings, right? And at that point, then we're like spiraling down into the end of the year through Sagittarius season and the Capricorn solstice and all of that. And I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to get that far ahead of myself, but I have this impression of, I feel, I feel so like immersed in my body and in the moment and feeling like taking just this moment at one, like taking this moment right now, this moment, being in this moment, like being completely present in this moment. But at the same time, I feel like my consciousness is like spanning like the entire year, almost all at once. And I'm like aware of my, my human experience traveling through time. So it's very interesting place to be it's a, it's like a new a new type of harmony between the moment and a larger pocket of time like between the moment and the year between the moment and the year the moment and the year i'm really aware of my moment i'm also really aware of the entire year which is interesting and it's like the details like this, this glass, I drink out of a, a lid cup all the time with a straw because I spill everything constantly all the time. I'm like always knocking stuff over or just like, like hand talking and spilling. So I drink out of lid cups. <laughs> um, and I drink cold brew 
herbal tea all the time, like instead of drinking juice, right? So I'm always putting little tea packets, filling this with water, putting them in the fridge. And then like, you know, a few hours later, I have cold brew herbal tea and I drink that all day. But I, the only tea I had left was like some black cherry herbal tea that I'd never had before. And I didn't really like it that much. So I just rinsed the cup out, um, put in some lemons. Now I'm just drinking lemon water, right? Which is the other thing I drink all the time. Um, but it's like the, I, the, the black cherry tea didn't rinse out of the cup fully. And it's like, I can taste it. And it's like essence of black cherry in my lemon water. And it's like really bothering me. But at the same time, I, 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 I didn't like go get a new cup. I could have just gotten new lemons and new water, right? And this is what I mean about like the details, the details. I, I, I was like very interested in this. And like, I kind of want to keep drinking it. It's like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, why, why am I like wondering about the meaning of the leftover tea flavor in my lemon water? Like, that's not something I need to be like thinking about, right? Why, why am I thinking about that? And yet it is something that is very interesting somehow to the back of my mind. So I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to let that be. I'm sure no one wants to hear more about my water, but <laughs> what, what else? basically treating this as like a dear diary moment, right? A dear diary where I'm trying to like situate myself, situate myself. So there's something about, maybe that's why the details are so interesting to me because I'm situating myself in the details. I'm situating myself in the details. That is the one thing I do to ground myself, right? Especially if I'm feeling like really out of my body or if I'm really anxious, I ground myself by noticing the details around me, by noticing my tea, by noticing the bagel I eat every morning for breakfast, by looking at my dog or my cat and like noticing details about their fur or just how cute they are, right? Any Anything like that. Okay, so this is where this is leading me. I've also been noticing something about myself and about people that I know, like in my physical human life, being like really hyper sensitive, being like really hypersensitive and like emotionally reactive to things that we simply don't need to react to emotionally. Like it, <laughs> and, and how this can escalate into this like insane mess. It's like, someone can be like, hey, how's it going? And, and like person A says, hey, how's it going? And then person B says, oh, blah, blah, blah. They make some kind of like half-hearted remark. And that it can be as simple as that. And then so like this person is offended and then this person is offended and now everyone's getting all like emotionally reactive and everyone starts like emotionally reacting to each other. And I go like, wow, that started because someone was like slightly irritated. <laughs> Somebody did something and the other person was slightly annoyed and then they reacted in a slightly annoyed way. And then the other person got like more annoyed and now everyone, now everyone's triggered, right? And now everyone is like getting salty and getting all tilted. Now everyone's reacting to each other and just like escalating in this insane. And then you could be that, and that conversation could end up going into some kind of like explosive argument that never really needed to happen. And it's all because essentially one person felt slighted and maybe they were originally annoyed because like their toothpaste was too hard to get out of the tube and that really like messed up their morning. Right. <laughs> and I've been like, I've been noticing this. I'm like, wow. Like, I mean, I'm doing this. My family's doing this. People are doing this. Like being like overwhelmed by the details, being overwhelmed by the sensory details, being overwhelmed by other people's emotional reactions. And then like telling other people like, Hey, you need to calm down. I saw how like emotionally reactive you were, but it's like, well, then why are you reacting to them? So emotionally, like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like emotional reactivity. It's not even like sensitivity, right? Because the sensitivity even in and of itself isn't really a problem. Um, it's how you react. It's how you deal with your own sensitivity, right? How you deal with your sensitivity. Just because you sense something very keenly and acutely doesn't mean that you need to have like a reaction to that. So that's, that, that is, that, that's some type of background theme. I, I don't know if, if that, I don't, I don't really think that that is particularly connected to this like moment that we're in right now with the Pisces full moon and everything else that is happening. But I feel like it's more noticeable. I feel like it's more noticeable. I feel like I'm, I'm always like that and that my family's always like that and that everyone else is always like that. But I feel like it's noticeable. Like I'm noticing it like suddenly I'm just like aware, I'm aware of how the emotional reactivity escalates a situation out of literally nothing, like out of literally nothing. 
So I don't know really what to do about that other than just to be aware of it and all I can do, I suppose, is this is this is the hard thing, isn't it? This is the hard thing because I want to be aware of my own emotional reactivity. If something happens, like if my toothpaste pisses me off, right? If I spill my tea or if somebody says something to me and they seem slightly annoyed, right? I want to like be the stopping point, right? If something annoying happens to me, I don't want that to snowball off of me. I want that to like, I want to stop that train with me, right? It's like if I, like, if I could just absorb it because really, really, okay. So really what we're doing when we have these crazy interactions that like spiral out of control, right? Escalate out of control. Um, really, I think what we're doing is we're actually like throwing tiny little shards of spiky energy, right? We, we do this with our words, with our facial expressions, with our body language, right? With the way we talk to people, we're like literally throwing shards of energy. So, and, and that's why we react, right? You might think, well, why did you react to someone that way when they just said something completely like, you know, so, so what? So what if that person was slightly annoyed or slightly offended when they talk to you? Why, why do you need to like react to them, right? It's because, well, literally, they literally hit you with a shard of energy, right? I always, I always like am more and more aware of how literally everything we do, you know, it's happening on the energetic level first and then how we experience it physically with and how we communicate with our human bodies and our human language. That's all that's like the set, like additional layers of the experience, right? The first, ex the first part of the experience is, is a little energetic splinter. We're like literally throwing, and I'm seeing them as orange in my head. It's like a little nasty little bit of energy that like, um, and a lot of the time it starts just because someone is upset or someone had a bad day, right? Or someone has some trauma, someone has some like, right? And, and it's like, that's inside of them. And then it like, at the first opportunity, like goes around to like, like flick, flick into other people, right? Like little porcupine quills flicking around. So that's essentially what we're all doing to each other. And it's like a domino effect, right? Then you get hit and then you send yours off and then you hit somebody else and then they send theirs off. And it's like this, this constant explosion. So how do we like stop that? Right. How, like, but of course, I just, I just have to bring this right back to myself, right? I have to bring this entirely back to myself because if I feel like I, if I am thinking about what anyone else is doing, then I'm contributing to the problem, right? It, it, I'm con like, if, if I'm worrying about what, what my family is doing, if I'm worrying about what, what you guys are doing, or it, then I'm contributing to the problem, right? So really, this is entirely about me. This is entirely about me sitting here alone in my bathroom talking to myself in this camera, right? Just talking to myself. So if I have this... If I notice, when I notice, when I notice that there's these like little spiky bits of energy flying around in a social situation and I get hit with some of these energetic spikes, what do I personally want to do about that, right? What do I personally want to do about that? I don't want to react and fling more energy spikes out at people. I don't, I don't want to like start, you know, shooting off energy with my words or, or anything else, right? I don't, I don't want that. I don't want to escalate things. But I also don't want to like be a martyr, right? I don't want to just sit here and feel like I have to eat it. I don't want to feel like I just have to sit here and like, you know, take all the wounds and bleed. That's not it. That's not it either, right? Because it's, it's not about being, it's not about being a martyr. That's not the solution either. Somehow the solution has to be to simply absorb or deflect, absorb or deflect, preferably to just absorb and dissolve to just to neutralize, right? To neutralize. Because I mean, if you, if you have to deflect the energy, you're still just sending it out there, but you have the right, right? Like I have the right to deflect in it. If, if, if there's an energy that I, that I, that I can't handle, that I can't absorb, that I can't process well, then I have that right to deflect it. And I don't have to take that on if I don't want to. But what if I could neutralize, right? What if I could neutralize these energetic shards that are coming at me? These energetic bullets, that's really what they're like, right? They're like energetic bullets. If I could just completely neutralize them, if I could just completely neutralize them. How could I just be like a bubble of neutralization? <laughs> how can I be a bubble of neutralization where when these energetic bullets come at me, how can I just, yeah, it's not about like absorbing them and taking them into me as wounds, right? And it's not about like, 
having to eat it or anything like that, right? It, it's like I want to just completely dissolve them, completely neutralize them so that they are gone, so that they are done, so that they have ended, so that they, that they do not harm me and they do not go out back out into the world and escalate a situation. I want to completely neutralize them. And I mean, I don't know how to do that. That's something I've been practicing my whole life, basically. I think we're all practicing that for our whole lives. But I don't, I don't, like, I don't know of a process exactly that I can, because it's not, not really about a process, is it? It's just about embodying the energy of neutralization. <laughs> how, how, how do we do that? How do we embody the energy of neutralization? So as I'm just feeling into this just right now, I, I'm feeling in myself, I call, I, I, I call it like the scorpionic state of constant transformation, right? Constant transformation. This is like Pluto, this is Scorpio energy when sometimes like Pluto or Scorpio can have this big moment of transformation, right? This big moment of transformation and it can be in big spikes like that. But when the Scorpio energy is, has reached a state of like constant oscillation where, where it is like stabilized itself to be a constant state of transformation. Like just, it's hard to describe. Maybe you can just get a sense of this, right? Instead of having like a big spike, a big spike, it's like a constant, constant state of transformation, just constantly transforming, constantly transforming. And to me that like, I can feel that constant state of transformation inside because it's like a constant refresh. It's a constant refresh, a constant resetting, right? Back, it's a constant resetting back to zero. And I think this, this is actually this constant state of transformation that I feel like that is at least one of the keys. That is one of the keys we can use to get into a place of neutralization, to just neutralize whatever energy is coming at you. If you're in that internal state of constant transformation, then anything that hits you will be neutralized. It, it's like, It's almost like refresh rates on a, on a screen, you know, like any display, any TV, any computer, any phone has a, has a refresh rate, right? It's like the, the lights at the back are, are uh, you know, flickering and, and like refreshing, right? I, I don't really know about this stuff. My husband, he's a computer tech, so he knows all of this stuff, but I don't know enough. I don't know about it enough to explain it to anybody, right? All I know is that, you know, displays have a refresh rate and you know, back in the day, if you remember your TV in the 90s, you, you know, you look at it too long and your eyes would be bleeding, right? Because it had a really slow refresh rate and your eye, even if, even if you couldn't really tell by looking at it, your eyes can tell, right? And it's harder to look at a screen with a slow refresh rate. If it's only refreshing at like, you know, 30 FPS or whatever, then that, that's hard on your eyes. But if you get a really high quality display, it has a really fast refresh rate, it's a lot easier on your eyes. You don't get, you don't get eye fatigue as easily and you don't get headaches as easily because it's, it's giving you a more constant picture. It's starting to refresh so fast that it looks nice and smooth, right? It looks very clear and very vivid. So that, that's kind of an analogy here, right? To, to get to that place of constantly refreshing to yourself to, to the point where you're just like in this constant state of like vibrancy, this constant state of neutralization and this constant state of, I am here in this moment, I am here, I am brand new right now. Whatever happened to me two seconds ago does not affect me, does not bother me, not unless I choose to bring it forward to me. What is going to happen to me 10 seconds from now does not affect me, does not bother me. Even if I'm kind of looking in that direction and I'm navigating my way around my future, I am aware of my past and of my future and I am navigating the bubble of my space-time reality as best I can, but none of it that is happening outside of my exact moment affects me because I am in a constant state of transformation and I am neutralizing all of the external energy that comes at me so I am just here in this like perfect state of oscillation. Like what, what I'm talking about, like this feeling here, right? Embodying this feeling and you could describe the feeling in a completely different way. This is just how the feeling translates into words for me. I, I just, it makes me feel like a glowing ball of silver energy that is just oscillating at such a high speed that it's like it's pure. It's like the speed of its vibration is how it, maintains its purity, right? The speed of its vi vibration maintains its purity. <sighs> Just one more thought on this. It's, you know, I used to go, always go through these really big 
energetic ups and downs, right? Like, and they were long and slow. And so I was in this state of transformation, <laughs> up and down, up and down, but they were slow. It took, took months, weeks, days, whatever, really long process. That's very laborious. That is really exhausting. And nothing about that is fun, right? You do not want to be in these long states of energetic shifts, right? And because like every time something would happen, then it would take so long for me to process and release it. So, 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 so long. And I mean, in this life, right, we're processing and releasing energy that's happened to us lifetimes ago. And, and it's like, that's how long, that's how long we're having to process it. But it's like, I feel like right now we have this potential to just turn off the, the dial on the speed of our evolution, the speed of our vibration, the speed of our transformation, like exponentially so much faster, right? So that instead of maybe it took, maybe at some point it took you a hundred lifetimes to go through a cycle of, one sim one cycle of transformation in a hundred lifetimes. And that's just some numbers I'm throwing out as if just, just purely for the sake of ex example, right? Now it's like, what if you could transform energy so fast because of the speed of your vib vibration? What if you could transform a thousand lifetimes of baggage? What if you could transform that? A thousand times a minute, right? Like that much faster. We're, we're talking like an entirely, an entirely different experience, an entirely different situation. And, at, and from that place where you're, where you're in this place of constant transformation and you move through your moment to moment to moment to moment, while still on a higher level, on a conceptual level, still being aware of how your body is moving through time and how it is, how, and how your entire year of experience is, is like a whole experience. It's like, there is a level of your consciousness that experiences the entire year at once. The entire year is like that. It's like that. It is like one thing. It is like one frame, right? It is one thing, but here you are experiencing 365 days, right? And every day is like a whole new thing. Very interesting, but it's like, you, you can be tuned into both those levels of your consciousness at once, where you are aware of the bigger picture of the entire year, you are aware of the minutia of your moment, and you're moving through it all, on all levels, all together, all at once. And of course, it goes way beyond just this one year, just this one life, all of that. You can stack this up and create an incredible cosmic picture of all of your different levels. But it's really hard to put this all together, right? It's hard to put this all together. It's hard to draw any conclusions here. I've just been on this crazy rant. Um, but it's actually really helping me understand how... I can move forward in, in, in like with, with this like energy of constant transformation and how, how that, how the energy of constant transformation can help me neutralize the energy daggers that sometimes come my way and I can neutralize them essentially by just, <laughs> why, why, why does any of that matter, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, I don't need to, I don't need to react to any of that none of it really matters, right? I can lean into the Pisces escapism when useful and none of those things need my notice or reaction at all. I just stay in my own energy. I just stay in my own state of constant transformation and I just blast forward, moving through what is going to be a cascade of new beginnings for like... <laughs> at least through Scorpio season, right? We have, we're not even in Libra season yet. We're in, we're in Virgo season. So we've got the rest of Virgo season. We've got Libra season and then we've got Scorpio season. That's kind of feels like the next moment, the next like package, the next package is what's coming up. And the more nimble and agile, the more we can tune into the energy of constant transformation, the more we can tune into the energy of neutralizing the external energy that is coming at you. All of these things are going to, I think, help us really capitalize on a new beginning, 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 a new beginning over and over and over and over again, the cascading of new beginnings. And so it doesn't, and because of that, it doesn't matter at all 
how you feel about where you're at right now because there's just going to be a cascade of new beginnings and you can and you can make use of those over and over and over again so you know a lot of people a lot of people tell me like i get emails people tell me i feel like i lost my chance i feel like i missed out i feel like i missed the moment i feel like i'm not going to have this opportunity again right it's like fomo right the fear of missing out and i gotta you know from my own experience i just gotta say there's this there's no such thing as a last chance. There's there's never truly a missed opportunity. There's just going to be another and another and another and another and another and another and another. And so right now, moving forward into this new beginning, new beginning, new beginning, new beginning, new beginning, new beginning. And that's what you do now. You begin anew. That's what we do. We, we begin anew every moment, right? Every moment. I mean, if you begin anew once every morning when you wake up, that's your new beginning. Excellent. But your new beginning can be right now, right now, right now, right now. Every second can be a brand new beginning. And from that space, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what happened five seconds, seconds ago. Like it doesn't at all. Your new beginning is right now, right? And <laughs> you just do that. You just have your new beginning as many times as it takes. So it's like, that's what, I think that's like, that's the point of, of this whole ramble I've been on, right? Is to get yourself into that frequency of the new beginning and you just hang on to that frequency of the new beginning and you hang on to that frequency of your constant internal transformation. And that is the thing to tune into, right? That is the thing to tune into. That is the, the frequency from which you can access your quantum life that is the frequency from which you can constantly recreate your life constantly reach new levels of experience constantly leave behind the old and constantly move towards into the new so i think that's the end of my diary rant <laughs> i'll talk to you guys later sending you so much love and light bye